<laughs> okay, fellas, put on your big girl panties. We're live. <laughs> We're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio. Myself, Hank Strange. I've also got Walter Keller from Saver Safety Harbor Firearms in the house, as well as the world famous, internationally known, and locally accepted Babyface P. <laughs> He's here, <laughs> and 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 he's ready to brag. <laughs> oh, yes. Face. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Today, this is going to be a Monday free for all. So we're just going to talk about like whatever you guys want to hit us up with questions. We'll talk about whatever's going on. I can hear something that Lola has going on back there. <laughs> Mute it, woman. We're live <laughs> on the air. So anyway, um, yeah, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want to. So our audience out there, happy Monday to you all. I'm personally not ready for this Monday. Oh, I was tired. <laughs> this came too fast. Yeah. So, yeah. And I got, uh, two hour, I got my two hours of beach time over the weekend, and I'm done for the rest of the year. Two hours, uh, so is that why you're wearing that hat? No, no. I'm just wearing like a reflection up here. I don't want to knock yeah, it. You, you don't look like you have a tan. I don't know. Oh, no. We didn't go to tan. We just went to play in the sand and flash yeah, Okay, water. yeah. Because you'd have to really turn it up, right? <laughs> to get a tan. I know. I, know. I, don't, I don't. Much more than 15, 20 minutes in the sun, and I'm like a freaking lobster. So. Oh, okay. What beach did you go to? Fort DeSoto. My favorite. Oh, okay. I don't think I ever heard of that. So yeah, it's a park. Uh, was it nice? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Was it was it like nice sightseeing out on the beach? No, it's it's. Well, I like to go to the beach and be away from all that monkey business. You know. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I mean, right. you know, so I so in other words, there were no chicks on this beach, <laughs> <laughs> or the muscle bound dude. Because you know? when I said sightseeing, I don't know what I know. You're I know what you're talking, talking about. about. I know what you're talking. Oh, about. oh okay. <laughs> no, no. This yeah. was uh. It's nice and quiet. There's this is like an old people beach. Like, we had a sandwich and you know had a little picnic oh. and you know it's cool. Okay, no nudity on the beach. Are there any nude beaches in Florida? Probably yeah. not, right? There are. They, remember, last week, remember the guy that got bit by the shark in South Florida? Uh huh. He was, he was at a nude beach. <laughs> what? There you go. Oh, Here's okay. your answer. I thought that was in oh this okay this wasn't Down in Florida, West Palm Miami. Beach. Where was it? Down towards Miami somewhere. Oh, towards Miami. Okay. Yeah. We need to get a map with all the nude beaches on it. So <laughs> figure that out and then do a tour. We'll go down. You know, we'll take our sexy bodies and go out on the nude beach. <laughs> like a white. <laughs> That'll really be scary. <laughs> like a white beach whale. That's what it is. Like. Yeah. The sharks will run away. <laughs> if you make too much reflection in the water, it looks like a school of fish and they attack you. You know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about a bunch of stuff. We all brought brought guns to show off, but Babyface has the coolest one. You want to just give us like a little tease of it? Actually, go ahead. Talk talk to us about it, Babyface, because I know you're. You want me to go from my cheapest to most expensive now? So you guys have seen this one. This is the Colt. Uh, God, I can't remember what this one is called. Python. It's, uh, like an officer model. <laughs> it's not a python. This is the one that I did myself, and you can see how rough and oh. it's a beater. Three fifty seven. Oh, this is a trooper. I'm sorry, this is a trooper 357. Trooper. Okay. Uh, today I got. Damn. Got your Python back. Got yeah. my Python looks... back. So um, we sent this one off to. Um, God, I don't even want to touch it and get fingerprints on it. Sent this one off to Ford's Custom in Crystal River. And yeah, um, in our neck of the woods. I got it. Yeah, this was one that was had been in a fire. It was horrendous looking. It looked really terrible. Um, so I sent it off to them and got it completely refinished, spent, and now all I need is a set of original grips because can't put some crap grips on a nice python. Yeah, um, what's but the, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it looks good. Out you can see. It. Yeah, they they polished it all the way up, so it's did it's lose, amazing. Did you lose anything when they polished it, or no? So actually, they polished it, and then um, I paid the extra like hundred bucks to have him laser engrave the logo back on. Oh, okay. So he may oh, have wow. lost the logo, but you can see he, I mean, he engraved it back into it. Oh, there you okay, go. So it's, oh yeah, it looks a lot better now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He redid that, that one. And then the barrel, um, the, I had to replace the barrel. So the barrel engraving is still right. pretty fresh. And I think you said you got a trigger job. Hold on. Let me, let me lock yeah, it. So I guess so he, at it. the same time, he, he tuned the trigger because I mean, it is, it, it, it's hard to show on here, but it breaks like a glass rod. It's a tiny bit of effort and it goes. So. Wow. 
What is that finish called now? Uh, it's, it's just, the, I think they call it the Royal Blue. So it's supposed to replicate the Colt bluing that you would get out of the factory. So this is, would, it would, when a, a Python would come out of the Colt custom shop at the Colt factory, it should look like this with the Royal Blue. Okay, cool. So did you, do you want to just recap the story of this whole thing? I think you, this was in a fire yeah. or something? How'd you get how'd Yeah, you okay, get this? so I originally had bought this one, the Trooper, and I was like, oh man, I paid like 200 bucks for this, and I redid it. And um, I, I got a big head of steam behind me. I was like, man, I want a new project. So I bought this Python, and I spent way too much money on this thing. Uh, I got it off a gun broker. It was $900, yes. Nine hundred dollars um, for a python. A python is usually fire, like yeah. But a python is what like usually three grand or something. A, a python, a nice a python in this condition is it's a three thousand dollar gun easily, uh, and they're not getting any cheaper. It's one of those guns that it's not getting cheaper. The Colt's not making them any longer, and even if they did, who knows if it'd be the same quality? Because these are all done by professional smiths, one at a time. Yeah, I mean those guys don't um, even work at Colt anymore. Yeah, the guys that that made these originally are no longer there. They got rid right. Of them. Um, so was in a fire. It looked horrendous. Hank can attest to it. It looked really, really bad. It was horribly pitted. Um, it looked, it looked terrible. Cancer in a gun. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was real bad. When, Hank, when Hank, it, yeah. When it came in, because uh, we're we're in FFL, so when it came in, Lola didn't even want to touch it. She was like, "What is?" Yeah, this she like horrible out of the thing. Box, was like, "I don't find me the <laughs> serial number. I don't want to touch it." Yeah, it looked like um, it had, um, so, I hate to say this, but it looked like it had AIDS or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was disease. Wait, $900 for that? For it. Um, send it yeah. So I was going to redo it myself, and it was just going to become a fun project. And like, yeah, I have a Python for 1000 bucks, something like that. I started taking it apart, and I was like, you know, I really should spend the extra money and have a professional smith take care of it because this is what you get in return. Yeah, because it's a um, classic, you know. So, yeah, they're, these guns aren't getting any cheaper, and they're not being produced any longer. So why – it's worth $1,000 to have it completely refinished. So I sent it to, um, to Ford's Custom, and they actually turned it around way quicker. I thought it was going to be about a three-month turnaround. They turned it around in about a month. Well, I guess they enjoyed working on it so much that they turned it around quickly for me. Yeah. Um, $1,200 to completely refinish. Um, it has a new cylinder and a new barrel because the cylinder and the barrel that were on it were too pitted. Um, oh. So I still have the cylinder and the barrel. If anybody wants a ugly Python cylinder and barrel, um, he even blew them for me. They're just not polished. They they pretty well look like this. They're really terrible looking, um, but I still have them. So you're twenty. What what is um, that like? Twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred. Yeah. Okay. Twenty one hundred dollars. So I need a I pair of grips. It's ready to go. Right. So a couple of things. One, Walter was asking. You know, he said you paid nine hundred for that. So is that like cheap, Walter, or too expensive? What do you think? I'm not a. I guess I'm not in the the world of pythons. So, um, if you go look right now on Gunbroker for what pythons are going for, uh, one that's in this condition is pretty easily three thousand dollars. Yeah, but you, so how much was a barrel and how much was a cylinder? So it was 900 for the gun in junk mode, and then everything, barrel, cylinder, refinish, tune, everything was 1200 So I got 21 in it. So you've got 18 in it all together. 9 and, tw and 12, 21. 9 and 12, right? Oh, 20. Yeah, okay, I can't, I can't add. That's 21. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, so 21, which I, I don't feel bad about it. As an investment piece and something that I'm going to keep forever, well, it feels too bad about it. As long as you're happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not for everybody. I'm surprised. Walter, do you have a do you have a, a Python? No, right? No. You're not. Okay. Are you into wheel guns? You into the the revolvers? Um, there is a 38 special here somewhere. Um, I know where it's at. Um, um, I've had a Dan Wessons in the past. Had a 44 Magnum. Um, that had multiple barrels, so you could change the lengths. Um. Okay, Babyface is still showing. Go ahead, show it off. He's still showing off. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> yeah, he's still showing off the gun. So you're not, you know, you know what? I'm going to tell you, uh, for I, baby. I don't want to say Babyface is cheap, but if he spent this kind of money on it, it's got to be a good deal because he's kind of cheap. After, after this year at the Shot Show, I got, I went over to the Smith and Wesson's area and I played with the um, 500 Smith and Wesson revolver. 
mm -hmm. and a little bitty, real short little barrel, and I was like, "This is cool." That is a monster. So, I was yeah. like, "That might have to be one of these." Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, that's I just like to, if it's going to so be, Ford's going to be, it's got to be different. So, right. so Ford's custom is also known for their work on. Um, uh, Desert Eagles. That's like what they're. I think one of their big things is is doing Desert Eagle work. They do custom sites and refinishing on Desert Eagles. Didn't have Hank post up, but they had a gold plated fifty eight Desert Eagle. I'm sorry, it was a forty four mag Desert Eagle in their mm -hmm. cabinet that was like engraved and it was it was cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a drug lord should own it, but it was super. <laughs> cool. Babyface, you don't yeah. have a forty four Magnum, do you? I don't. I need a forty four mag. Or 5080, one of the two. He's. I, I happen to have a few uh, 44 Magnum rounds sitting around here that I that I have no use for. So we need to find something to shoot them in. We need to. Yeah, yeah we need we'll, to we'll find. Up. We'll find. We'll find something to shoot <laughs> them in. Somebody, maybe a 904, 904 Tactical. Are you out there? I mean, right 904 up, Outdoors. Yeah. Outdoors. Are you out there? Steve, I don't know. You might <laughs> we be. Need, we need a 44 Magazine kind. Yeah. So people want to know if I'm into Colts. Uh, I, I don't know. Probably. I'm going to say not. I know that uh, Babyface has gotten into it lately, and he's kind of like pulling me in with the gravity of all of his excitement. You know, I know it's a cool thing to have. Uh, isn't it? Isn't it a good thing to have like an original cult AR, I guess? I have one. Yeah, that's like a thing. Yeah, like an SPO one or something. I have yeah. one. Yeah, but I know that these pythons are a big deal. I know that for a fact. The, the, the like pythons have, are a big deal, too. I'd like to have some original Colt military revolvers in good condition. But yeah. I don't have I, That's one that I've wanted, like the 1917 yeah. 45 ACP revolver. Yeah. I've wanted one of those for a long time. I do have that um, that new Army uh, Colt that I talked to you about, Babyface, about fixing. Yeah, so we got to send those in because I have a 1911 that needs to go in as well and get refinished. Yeah, it needs uh, to be. It's nickel plated and it's nasty. It needs to be stripped. Yeah, they can. So, so they can strip the nickel and they can either replate it in nickel or. Blue it, whatever you want, really. Gold plate it, you can get it gold plated. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you guys, do, does anyone have any single action? Well, I thought you had some kind of single action, I do. Walter. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I have two, um, two, I got a 38 and a 45, but they're new. They're not old. So. Oh, okay. I thought someone had like a dragoon or something. Someone told me they had a. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Walter, wasn't that you? No? what I have? A dragoon? Oh uh, yeah, new one. Yeah, that's the black. Oh powder. no, no. Oh okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, I got. We're gonna have to have a black powder uh, shooting experience because I've got a few that I haven't even fired. So. Yeah, I still haven't. Cool. I've never shot black powder. Black powder. To. Yeah. You got two black powder noobs over here, Walter. So we should we should yeah, do that. I wanted to shoot black powder for a long time. Yeah. So let's uh, you know, this is like a free for all. We're gonna go. We're gonna keep this crazy and go through news things. So I'm going to do the news thing first. I'm going to talk about some news. You guys, while I'm doing this, you guys can get your news things up. I'll go to the, I'll go to Walter for the news after this. So let's talk R. Kelly. Apparently, R. Kelly is starting his own cult. And it's with new <laughs> girls, apparently. So it says, uh, this is in Rolling Stone, R. Kelly unequivocally unequivocally, excuse me, denies cult allegations. So R. Kelly has denied the cult allegations that surfaced Monday, accusing the singer of controlling the lives of six women through manipulation and physical and verbal abuse. So it says uh, Robert Kelly is both alarmed and disturbed by the recent revelations attributed to him, says his lawyer. Um, he unequivocally, unequivocally, excuse me, I don't know why I'm saying ugly, unequivocally denies such accusations and will work diligently and forcibly. There's a lot of leads in here <laughs> to pursue <Yeah>. his accusers <laughs> and clear his name. On Monday, an explosive BuzzFeed news report detailed the accusations against Kelly by the families of two women. The singer has allegedly brainwashed into sexual servitude as well as corro um, corroborating statements by three women who were formerly in Kelly's inner circle. So um, says, according to accusations, Kelly is, ho is housing at least six women at his properties in Chicago, Atlanta, and Atlanta, uh, where the singer dictates what they eat, how they dress, when they bathe, when they sleep, and how they engage in sexual encounters. This goes sounds on like and on. Sounds like he's a pimp. Well, I mean, this, sounds this, like he's a pimp. <laughs> um, you know, is, that, is listen, that what they call it now? Is it a cult now? 
<laughs> what pimping? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, listen, you're not a pimp unless you are like selling it. You know. If, well, like, how do you pimp, know he isn't? If a pimp is getting off, if you're getting high off your own supply, you're not a pimp. <laughs> that, that's when it becomes like a cult type situation. If you're not making money out of it, you're not pimping. You're just like enslaving some people. Isn't okay. You know. Well, then that's uh, that what they call now uh, um, trafficking in human trafficking or something like that. Or well, well he's not trafficking. It sounds yeah. like he's just using them for his yeah. own his own. Whatever. Yeah, they are voluntarily <laughs> subjugating themselves. Not yeah, sure. voluntarily. Yeah. Young Listen, women. we don't have Michael Jackson anymore, so R. Kelly's trying to like pick up the baton, I guess. He's got to step up his game with the with the craziness. He's been in the news enough lately. Yeah, I mean, you know, come on. We this is not the first time that we've heard of this kind of stuff from R. Kelly. So I don't know if you I don't know if you've heard of any of R. Kelly's other shenanigans, Walter. Oh yeah. No, I don't I don't try to keep up with the uh Oh, okay. That well, stuff. But let me just put it to you this way. If you Google R. Kelly and um, he's into some freaky yeah, stuff. sexual allegations, <laughs> and really horrible stuff is gonna come oh, up with some very it? young girls. Now, wasn't he like drugging him at one time too and doing stuff to him? Oh, he likes to pee on him. Yeah. I was going to come out and say it. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's, I mean, there's video. Well, of it's course. Just, it's just, you know, to each his own. Yeah. What, what is that? Never mind. It was Bill Cosby. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. It's not Bill Cosby. There's video of what R. Kelly did, but it's illegal for anyone to watch the video. So I've never seen it, apparently. Allegedly. Never seen the video. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I don't know, man. Um, you know, maybe R. Kelly has an album coming out or something that he wants to, he needs to yeah, pick up the sales. So he's like, yeah, let's get this. You know, although it sounds like he doesn't really want this to get out there and become a thing. Eh, probably not. You know, but I guarantee you this, you know, this will go away and they will spend more time talking about like Trump Jr. <laughs> in the news. They will they Pretty will much. get to the bottom of what Trump Jr. did in, with some Russians before they find out what the hell R. Kelly's up to. Yeah, there's so, there's a, yeah. Yeah. So what's your what's your news thing that you want to talk about, Walter? Well, I see I see I see oh I see the juice is coming up from parole. OJ. Uh, you know, and um, you know, he he was he got away with double murder, and then he you know he wants to <laughs> He wants to be a thug and he gets thrown in jail again. So, yeah. Um, so he's coming up for parole where in uh, in Nevada, right? I guess, yeah, that's where it seems. Yep, that's what it says right here. Yeah, early yeah. as October first. So is it what, like, what, how will OJ be accepted? Well, <laughs> is it a done deal that he's getting out, or it's going to be like a herring? We don't know. Um, I think it's just he's coming out. up probably in front of the parole board. Probably. Like yeah, it. I imagine there's like a hearing and everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how so long has how long has OJ been locked up in Nevada? Like, has it been ten years already? No. Wow, OJ's seventy years old. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's getting old. Wow. Um, the young says, baby longer. Yeah. Now seventy Simpson will have history in his favor and a clean record oh, behind bars. Right? Yeah. As he approaches the nine year minimum of his thirty three year sentence for armed robbery and assault with a weapon. Plus the parole board sided with him once before. I mean, like, only in Nevada can you go to jail for trying to steal back your own shit. <laughs> well, how? You know, got to get look, him somehow. Look, after after you after you got out of a double murder, are you going to get back? Try, I don't care what they steal from me. I ain't going to try to steal it back. I'm going to be so super in Has this ever happened to anyone else other than me? Where you get into like some serious shit. I never got into OJ type shit. But you know, you get into some kind of terrible trouble, <laughs> you know, where you like have to find a lot of money or something. I don't know. Something crazy. But listen, like but listen, you have something crazy happen and then you're like making deals with God. You're like, God. I will never do this again. If you save me from this, yeah. if, you, if you just keep me from getting, you know, completely <laughs> ass raped in prison, <laughs> I will never, I will never ever do anything bad ever again. So yeah, man. I mean, you would think that after OJ, pretty much, because I don't know what you guys think. I'm pretty sure OJ did it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I so I was doing some reading, so. and there was some pretty convincing stuff about. Uh, his steps, his no, his son, killing her. 
Oh, um, that his son did it? His yeah, son that his son actually did it because he's got like really bad anger issues or something. His his son didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, was he was he like strong enough at the time to do? What, I mean, that was yeah, like one was, of the most gruesome was, things. He was in his teens. He was in his late teens, and the, the kid was like to to decapitate two people at the same time because the dude was really strong. So this would have to be like a his, he would have to have been on some serious drugs or something. And Amelia but, Earhart got captured by the Japanese too. He. he Oh, she got she got abducted by aliens. Come on, come on. Amelia Earhart is living in the Poconos or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So is uh, right, okay. <laughs> What are you talking about? I thought they found her in the. Where was that? No, that was like in the Fiji Islands. Where, where did they find her? So recently? think they found. They They're hanging they found out with Jim Morrison somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because there's no one on the planet that looks like Amelia Earhart. OJ's blood, OJ's blood was there. He did it. Come on, stop the stop making excuses. He yeah. killed them. I'm not making excuses. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure OJ, you know. Uh, I mean, it listen. Makes for, it makes for good conspiratorial stuff, but it has none no None of class. us know. None of us know. The people who know. Well, he did write a book that said that was titled If I Had Done It, right? Yeah, yeah. The thing <laughs> is, is that the truth is that, yes, after you get away with something like that. You, you lay you, low. You say you're going to yeah, yeah. lay low. You say you're gonna lay low, but then and then he's like, like not. <laughs> yeah, you've tasted blood now. You gotta keep going. You know, <laughs> it's like you've tasted blood. It's like mm, I gotta keep doing some shit. Every now and then, you gotta get back in the news. You know, get out there. It's like DMX, man. DMX is all. I can't believe DMX is like an old man. He's got he's got like more gray hairs than me, and he's still getting in the news. Well, how is the government st still at this point catching up to DMX? You, you know, he, uh, if I, I think I remember this, he turned down one of the roles in Fast and Furious 1. Way back when, they offered him the role of, um, oh, I don't remember the character's name, but DMX was offered the role, oh, and he I was like, nah, you're good for that. Yeah, or maybe and they didn't want to pay him cash, because I was reading the thing about DMX, because I think the IRS has him on, like, $2 million worth of, t 2 or $3 million tax evasion, and he, he was making everyone pay him um, in cash. Walter, do you know who DMX is? Uh, no, I do not. Oh, okay. Was he a musician? Yeah, rapper? he's a rapper. He's a rapper. He's a pretty okay. good rapper. He's one Early of my favorite. Rapper? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of my favorite rappers. He's really good. He's got like a husky voice. He's known for barking like. Yeah. Yeah. Henry yeah. says deep. deeper than that. But, you know, he's got like a deeper bark. I can't even do it. <laughs> if I could do, if I could do what uh, DMX does, I wouldn't be sitting here with you guys. I'd probably be like in prison, you know, with the IRS coming after me but um yeah it's crazy that's so crazy okay okay let's uh let's see what else we got here so yeah, so, much, so much for oj right yeah baby face what you got we'll come we'll come okay, back so the other story that we were talking about was the london uh acid attacks i guess Some right kid, acid attack. kid. yeah this is From horrible what Rita said he wasn't a kid he was 19 so yeah he was technically an adult uh, was running around within the span of 90 minutes throwing acid in people's faces and potentially burglarizing six people, uh, burglarizing two, and attempted burglary on four, um, or mugging. I guess it'd be called a mug when you <laughs> you mug somebody. Burglary is when you break into something. Um, but yeah, this kid's like in a ton of trouble. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I would never... I've never been so mad that I've wanted to throw acid in somebody's face. Yeah, but this is like a big thing. We, we were talking about this behind the scenes. I mean, there's certain people who do this. It's, I mean, it happens in the world. I think you have, uh, you know, a certain set of people that this is the thing they do <laughs> when, you know, when they get mad at you, they throw acid at you. you this face. is like an accepted thing. It's up there probably with stoning. There's some people that this is like a cool thing to do. And, um, you know, what is this? I, I'm reading here in London in 2015, it, it was it went from 261 incidents, 261 incidents to 454. So now, of course, in London, they want to they want to ban ban acid. Oh, that'll fix it. That'll <laughs> fix it. Right. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. How the hell are you going to actually are ban acid? No, they do you think I'm kidding that they want to ban something in London? <laughs> I can't even imagine. Why do you think I'm kidding about that shit? They want to ban everything. Thing. Yeah, no, they're <laughs> no, they want to. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I think they're banning the wrong thing. 
It says Home Secretary Amber Rudd wrote um, that those who use noxious liquids as a weapon should feel the full force of the law, quote unquote. Um, of course they should. Anybody that uses a weapon as a weapon um, and does something illegal should feel the full force of the law. Yeah, I think in London you should be able to arm yourself so that if people try to throw acid up on you, you could bust <laughs> caps luck. on their asses. <laughs> Good That's, luck with that. I want them to feel the full happy. force of my nine MMs <laughs> tagging them up. <laughs> I, think, I think we'll use it like Roger Rabbit did. They had the dip. Roger Rabbit. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so you're saying you dip those people in acid? Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm sure the UN will love that. <laughs> it might make the other ones think twice about Remember, it. Remember, we've got to punish these people in a kind, humanitarian way. All right, you put a rope we around have, them first, then you dip them in acid. Yeah, we have to punish them with kindness, so that they'll never, they'll never throw acid in someone's face and ruin their whole lives ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's horrible, man. That is, look, anything that you, first of all, you should never, you know, attacking other people, is sh that's just crazy. But throwing acid also, on people, I mean, that's just like. They also like to wow. throw it in the face of women, too. So they pick the most um, um, easiest targets, too, to just remember that. Yeah. Yeah. They don't go after the big bruiser uh, rugby player that will turn their ass inside out. Yeah, but listen, we're all vulnerable. We're all targets. I mean, if you're if you're walking around and you can't defend yourself and these guys know they can just come up and throw some shit in your face. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a big muscular uh, rugby guy. Well, just if you get some acid yeah. in your face, you're going to cry and like hey, a little bit. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. How many rugby guys have thrown acid in their face? Done. Finished. <laughs> they have <laughs> well, well, okay, but I'm just trying to tell you. If, I'm just trying to tell you. Okay, no matter how badass you are, when some acid is coming flying at your I face. I understand that, that, but, yeah, okay. No, I, I get it. I understand what you're saying, but still, man, I mean, you know, if, you, if, you're, not, if you're not able to defend yourself and you're walking around, and yes, I, I understand where you're coming from. Most people that want to victimize people, victimize the most vulnerable you know they look for they, victims that's where it comes from you know i mean they look for victims for people that they yeah, can easily I, do things to but you know no matter who you are man you get acid in your face that's a horrible thing oh yeah 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 i mean Ugh. you know you're, yeah. it's going to take you a long time before you think about finding those people and kicking their asses if you can even see at that point so it's a it's a terrible thing and uh you know well, Unfortunately, they don't have the death penalty in England because they got uh, rid of that too, a long time ago. They, they become too civilized. That's their problem. That's what. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's you <laughs> know. As I, I always say when the English and I have English friends when the English became civilized, mm -hmm. they lost their whole empire. So, you know, they gave it all away, and everybody's free borders and come and you know come and do what you want. And, well, yeah, how so much, much longer? How much longer do you think? Um, I mean, if you guys look at the like. The pictures of these young women that have to deal with that, you know, uh, like throwing acid and, and, and slashing women and doing all those horrible things. I mean, I would export, I, I, the person that does that, I catch them and I I'd, I'd, I'd deport their whole family. Yeah, the whole I don't care if they've been there for 100 years, they get sent back to the shithole that they bombed up where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. is that kind of blunt? But I. You got you got to do it like the Israelis do. You you kill you. They blow their family's house up. <laughs> That's just I'm random, like, random yeah. houses yeah. on the countryside of the UK just get blown. Yeah. Up. I mean, the, I mean, <laughs> you don't have to blow the house up in London. You give it to somebody that really needs a house, but you can deport the whole family. Sure, Long someone who really needs a house surrounded. <laughs> well, most of them are living right. in the projects anyways over there, so yeah. they don't own anything anyways. I don't know, man. I don't know how much longer, you know, I know you're a fan of England. You know, I've lived there. Um, I get it. You know, um, I like England. They, they make they make uh, some cool movies. There's some cool movies that have come out of England. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of fish and chips. I, I won't deny that, but I'm a, I don't fan know. Of, I'm a fan of the beer at the pub. Yeah. You know, well, it's kind of warm <laughs> for me, but I uh, never had know. a warm one. It's always cold. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know how long England's gonna keep going like this, man. They're gonna uh, become like a totally different thing. English, I think, will probably rise up eventually. You think so? 
Yeah, so like the Germans. You're gonna get tired of it. They have to. Well, I think they've been. I think the people in England have been uh, pretty much declawed, you know, yeah, and pacified. Yeah, yeah totally. You need yeah. to get rid of the leftists running the place. I, I don't think. I don't think there's enough people there that can get angry to really make changes. Oh, I mean, they're okay. trying to undo. They're trying to undo Brexit right now. I don't think people are mad. Look, did you have you seen the video of where there was like. Um, you know, there was some, um, there were these rallies, or I don't know, some kind of uh, rioting that went on with um, with uh, with Muslims in England, and the cops were running away from them. Did you see that? <laughs> well, this is in Germany. Is that was that in Germany? No, I thought this was in London. Because like, yeah, they don't Whatever. they don't bring out enough toys to to deal with the crowds. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure this was England, but I would have to check. Uh, where, you ever seen, what, you ever seen a crowd in a water cannon? During uh during the G20 summit, they had uh, Antifa took basically took over in Germany, and the police they they were not the police force is basically completely unprepared for it. Yeah, and they just kind of will step back and let let Antifa run amok and burn whatever they wanted and loot and riot and do whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At that point, you're, you're you're it's like the beginning of the end. I don't think you're going to last that long. I think <laughs> some people are going to get mad. Yeah. But how much can you really do when most of the people are pacified? You know, you need you need enough people to get pissed off. You know, I I wonder how long, especially in that circumstance, the Germans will take it because I don't think they're the type of people that like being walked over by others, walked on top of. No, the Germans the Germans have a a Nazi um, syndrome that always. That's, is yeah, I think that's their the problem. Is they're they're too Nazis. They still feel um, they still feel like they need to be apologetic to what they did back in the forties, which right. Like, and none of the whatever. most of those people there didn't do anything to anybody. So yeah, it's kind of exactly. like here, the same kind of thing is dangled over a lot of people here. Like, oh, it's your fault. Well, not my fault. Mm -hmm. I didn't own you. You know. Yeah, I'm not saying there's not some of those Nazis still alive, but they're pretty fucking old yeah. at this point. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's only so much punishment that we could give to them that they're even going to feel. You know, it was obviously a horrible yeah. thing. If, if they're still alive, they got to be in their late nineties. I mean, mm -hmm. but but there's there's a, a feeling in Germany, I, I, from what I understand, of still being like afraid to flex yeah. any muscle. It's like German guilt. Well. German guilt. Yeah, it's, it's guilt. It is. It's truly yeah. guilt. German guilt. You know what? Um, so speaking of England, some one of you guys brought this up. There, I guess they announced that there's gonna. Is, are you guys into Doctor Who? I'm kind of into Doctor Who. I watched yeah. it. You into Doctor Who, Walter? Do you even know who well, Doctor Who is? Sorry. Do you know? Do you know who Doctor Who is? Yeah, yeah. My my Peggy likes to watch Doctor Who. I I just kind of I'm I'm tormented with it when it's on. So yes. Yeah, it's gotten. Listen, I remember I lived in England in the in the uh, 70s in the mid to um, late 70s, and uh, Doctor Who has completely fucking changed. So now right. they've. Now they've announced a female Doctor Who coming up in the next season. I guess her name is Jodie yeah. Whittaker. I, Have you guys I, seen uh, this? She's on Broadchurch, the other Springley show called Broadchurch right now. Yeah, she looks familiar. I'm looking at her. I could tell you right now she's too bony. And a <laughs> <little> <laughs> bitch. What? She's too bony. How the hell are you going to have a female Doctor Who that's not are, cute? All the chicks that are always there, the companions, the, the female companions on Doctor Who are always cute. They always have some decent boobage going maybe, on. I had just had a ter terrible thought. I don't know if I should well, say it or not. But no, go ahead. Say it. Maybe we'll, have well. Our first, maybe we'll have our first lesbian Doctor Who. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that, but I still want to see boobage. <laughs> you know? I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna make it a woman, I mean, why not like you know, like you know, if you're if you're doing it to please the PC it? crowd, then it's it's wrong. Oh. If you're if she's a fantastic doctor, if she turns out to be a fantastic doctor, and it's oh. not to please so a certain group of people, so boobage oh, cool. boobage is not. So they're gonna deliberately get a flat chested female Doctor Who just whoa, to whoa, make whoa. me mad. <laughs> you know she's flat chested. <laughs> yeah. Look at the pictures, dude. There's this thing called Google. So that's a the new oh Doctor Who is so what? Google her if anyone wants to if anyone wants to know Jodie Whittaker her name is Jodie Whittaker I'm not she's not you know yeah she's listen, on Broadchurch I'm not saying I would kick her out of bed or anything like that I mean but I'm a dude I, I don't see what there's I don't think there's anything wrong here she's I'm like, all right yeah, with this she doesn't have enough right. boobage I want more boobage <laughs> that's just me yeah I need more boobage is that yeah. wrong am I wrong for that. What do you hate? Yeah. I'm just. I think. I think when it comes to Doctor Who, I'm curious to see how they spin her character because mm -hmm. you know every Doctor has its own personality. Right. So, I, I don't know how what kind of character they're gonna have. 
So we'll see. I stopped yeah. watching after David Tennant. I didn't see whatever Matt Stone or um, <laughs> Chris yeah, B. They, well, they went with an old first. They went with was an octogenarian. They had a, the last Doctor Who or the current Doctor Who is an octogenarian Doctor Who, which is just <laughs> yeah. I guess. Well, I guess back in the days he was he was old. Originally, I think the original Doctor Who was kind of old. Um, you know what? You know what I really don't like about Doctor yeah. Who? He's just all talk. Yeah, it's boring. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. It's boring. You know, what? like a no. good, a good Doctor Who episode has some real like sci-fi and crazy they, backgrounds and alien chicks with like they talk boob for like minutes. boobies, like test like you know tentacles with boobies and stuff. Um, but now it's just <laughs> he just talks his way out of everything. Yeah, it's it's very um it's very um um let's just say. They do a lot of talking and then five minutes of action and it's over. Yeah, yeah. There's like, okay, here come the aliens to Earth. They're ready to kick our asses. They've got robots. They've got everyone ready to mess us up. And then Doctor Who just gets up there and go, do you know who I am? I'm Doctor Who. I will destroy you. Will, yeah. He just says a bunch of stuff and the aliens go, hmm, let's just go back home and they leave. There's no ass kickery going on. <laughs> yeah. That's totally. I'm not a fan of that. It's the same thing with uh, Sherlock, which I like. It's a, it's a, it was a decent show, but I noticed the last stuff that I watched, they must have the same Doctor Who writers or people in England are just so like pacified at this point that they just don't even know what they're doing is bullshit. But they were doing the same thing. They were just talking their way out of whatever the problem is, you know. Well, you don't you don't need any weapons to do anything, right? Yeah. Also, it's probably cheaper to not have some cool alien. Like, what's your what's your favorite Doctor Who episode, Babyface? Your you know the the new ones. Oh, favorite episode? Okay, so I have to preface. Like I said earlier, I didn't watch Matt Smith and I didn't see uh, Peter Capaldi. I stopped at David Tennant because David Tennant is my generation's Doctor. Like, I love David Tennant. Um, Oh God, man! I gotta think. There were some good ones. Um, David Tennant had amazing episodes. Yeah, I like all the stuff with uh, what's her name. I forgot the name, but not his. She wasn't really his wife, but that that chick that had a reoccurring role and she was all badass. I like badass chicks. One of the. I mean, he always has companions, so it depends. She on wasn't companion. a companion. She was. She was a little bit uh, like another, the doctor. Another Doctor Who. Yeah, she was like a female Doctor Who. Oh. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. I don't remember. She just, she just went away in those one of the last episodes, I think. Yeah, she's all, she went off to some other shows, but she was uh, she was cool. She yeah. was kind of like a milf, you know. I was feeling it. Yeah, yeah. But it's just you have to be a you have to be a Whovian to understand all that Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, I like the ones with like where they have where the aliens have cat heads and all that kind of crazy stuff, where it's real fantastical. Yeah. I like I, I like the fantastical episodes. I yeah. think those are the best. Yeah, if if give me like some the real escapism. I remember well, being yeah. tormented with Doctor Who back in the 70s when it was on PBS and my parents would flip it on sometime. My dad would watch a little bit and I'm going, and it was so lame back then because there was no special <laughs> effects. There wasn't anything. You weren't Just scared of those of the dialects? The, that's the one. It's the, the one called uh, The Empty Child. The big robe outfit. You know, it's like, you know. Uh, okay. What was that, baby? The, the one called The Empty Child. That's my favorite. Where, like, if the kid touches you or hugs you, you get, like, oh. a gas mask oh. or whatever. It's terrifying. Yeah. Well, you know what's creepy? You know they have some That's statues cool. that the statues, like uh, when you're not looking, they move. <laughs> Those are creepy. <laughs> that one, yeah, the, the angels. The angels. Yeah, the, that one was yeah. super creepy. Oh, hey, Those speaking of that, do you see where uh, Schwarzenegger went out and did Terminator, and he did it like he was like like a statue, and people got close to him, he moved. <laughs> <laughs> Probably was good. Uh, yeah, that was a while ago, right? Well, was whatever it? it was, it was it was hilarious because people like freak out. <laughs> Wasn't he in Madame yeah, Tussauds exactly. or something? One of those museums. Oh, that stuff is funny. Is that one of those. Yeah, he was in one of those museums. So anyway, I think they should definitely like boob up this chick a little bit. That's going to be Doctor Who. But <laughs> what, I was, probably, what, I was, what I was asking about, I asked my wife. I said, "How are they going to do her hair? You know, they're going to make her hair like up, down, tied oh, up, crazy hair." Yeah, what are they going to do? I doubt she's going to be crazy. I don't think she's going to act know. all crazy like Doctor Who usually Maybe, acts. All the doctors doctors have a of you never know. Listen, we're just going through this thing now where men are just dying off. There's going to be no more men. If you're, you're oh, no that's male that's character, that's you can't have any male heroes anymore. Uh, they're all going away. That's crap. Dying. That's just how it is already, now. Yeah. Have you, have you seen the Marvel has already taken a hit for for changing up their their format? They were for the last what five or ten years they've been pushing female characters and even like replacing 
uh, male characters with females, and mm -hmm. they've taken a huge hit. It doesn't work. Because, yeah. Because people are like, just just write new characters. If you want like a strong female character, just write a new one. Don't replace somebody yeah. with or, a female or all just because you feel or like all of a, Or all of a sudden, the old character turns out he's gay. Yeah, it's like, they, come on. they've been doing that. Why are you and people are like, like, yeah. Don't care. I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing against the gay people. Why you got to do this stuff to... You, you, yeah, you're pushing an agenda. Brand. Yeah, you're pushing an agenda. Listen, I knew I knew we were in trouble when um, when Battle Star Galactica came back, and they changed uh, Starbuck to a chick. Now uh, I'll tell you, she's a cute chick. I like Katie Sackoff. Uh, totally. You know, I never saw the original, so I only know the new yeah, one. Yeah, well, so I'm, I got. That's the problem <laughs> with you, damn young people. I know the original was the best. <laughs> You know, I like why I don't understand why they just couldn't give her, her her own thing or like you know why did they have to like when that happened I was like this is the apocalypse right now that'd be like making <laughs> <Captain Kirk. laughs> that'd be like making Cap <laughs> making Captain Kirk into a girl yeah you can't that, do that come yeah. on well see see what what you do there is you do what was there they had a female um, did they have a female captain on one of the series. Yeah, um, but not I, I didn't. Wa I refused to watch it because of that. And I like Katie Sackhoff. She's like, she's like a hot chick, in my opinion. Well, that's no, what I say. Don't don't replace thing. don't replace a, fe a character with a female. Just write a new yeah, series. Get, she's with badass. A female as a lead. Yeah, she's badass on her own. Um, yeah. I don't know if you watched Longmire, but she's she's cool in Longmire. Uh, I don't know if you watched that. It's, it's you know I like it. It's decent. I like I I like her. I'm feeling her as an actress and everything. But you know she would have if they had to go make a female doctor. But she's not British, so there you go. See, that's another thing. That's another Stop thing right there. This is just like this reminds me of Harry Potter. Do you know that the Harry like J.K. Rowling insisted that none of the Harry Potter characters could be American. They all had to be British. Well, yeah, you know. Well. So, Okay, but guess what? What if we did that here in America? For for example, if we if we say that no, we don't do that in America. If we say that none of these superheroes can be like they all have to be American, half the superheroes would go away because half of the people in these things are all British actors and actresses, right? Well, so, I mean, they make good, I don't know if he no, he's Australian or something. There's a lot of make, Australians and Brit and Brits. They make good bad guys. Yeah, so I agree with it's that. It's the accent. Something about the accent just makes you come off as. Yeah, how is it? How is it? You're like, bad character. You're out in the middle of space, nowhere in the middle of nowhere in the in another universe or wherever you're at, and you run into an Englishman. How does that happen? <laughs> it's just programming. It's subliminal programming. They're trying to make us respect respect the British for their accent. You know, you notice that like someone has a British accent, and you just do whatever they say. It's like <laughs> that guy's got to be smart. He's got a British accent. <laughs> Right, so sure. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to talk about Katie Sackhoff. She's she's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and ironically, I'm looking up her images on Google, and she actually has a picture of her dressed up as like '70s Doctor Who, which is kind of creepy. Oh, uh, there they go. She looks. She looks. You know, completely different. She actually looks like. Uh, she looks like Doctor uh -huh. Who, but she's. You know, once again, I'll just say that she's hot chick. I'm feeling Katie Sackhoff. Okay, so what other news you got, Walter? What else? What else you got? <laughs> let's, 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 Facebook. Interesting let's go. stuff on Facebook. Yeah. A you know what? Let's here. I'll show a gun. How about that? I'll go to a gun while you're looking. Well, while you were talking, while you were talking earlier about black powder guns, here's the, pull uh, up. the dragoon. Oh, there you go. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to. Uh, this one here has not had its. Uh, um, we'll say cap. Yeah, it has not been baptized in fire. Yeah, yeah. So we need to bust some caps on this one here. So okay, all right. So you got all the necessary materials? Yeah, I do actually. I got rounds and powder and everything. So okay, nice. Yeah. So yeah, we got to do that one of these days. I know we're um, we're all getting out on the range. This uh, I think this weekend coming up, we're going to be doing stuff. Uh, Nine oh four outdoors, baby face. That's what I hear. Yeah, um, I, I think we're going to have some special house. guests out there. So look, you guys want to see? Look, this, this here. Oh, hold on, let me lock. Let me lock myself in here so you guys can check this out. Look at that. This is a 1022 that we built on. This is the um, from Old Fort Arms. This is called the Arrowhead Stock, and that is the slower part here. And it allows you to build up your own 1022. So up here is the uh, the receiver. 
And um, so this is like a Ruger 1022, like an aftermarket receiver that we built up. We have a video out on this. We've got a folding stock on it. That's a pain for me to pull up. There we go. I actually was able to do it. Flipped it over. There you go. And the beauty of this is integrally suppressed barrel from YHM. So this is the rifle length. This is a cool build. We have a video on this that just went up, so you guys should check that out. And of course, we've got like a prismatic uh, two and a half by from Primary Arms. Um, Dimitri from Primary Arms was on the show the other day. So Babyface and I, we put this together. Basically, I think the video is about 40 minutes, right, Babyface? Uh, somewhere like Something about that. It, yeah, it, yeah, it took us about like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half or something to put this together to go out there and shoot it. You remember? Can you remember that far back? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was reading through something. Yeah, it took yeah. us, I mean, it took us, yeah, an hour and change, almost two yeah. hours in for everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, the video is a little bit longer, I'm, I'm sure, than some people would like, but I thought it was cool because we showed us putting this together, and then we went out and shot it, and it was a lot of fun. It's always fun building uh, 1022s. Now, what was the question you were asking me about this, Walter? How much does it cost? <laughs> Yeah, I, w I was asking about that because I know there's a lot of, uh, I can see a lot of high-end stuff there. So Yeah, this is probably, when you look at it, because the integral barrel itself, I think, is about five, 600 bucks. You know, then you got, of course, the, um, you know, the arrowhead stock and all the different parts. I'm going to say that this whole thing probably came dangerously, precariously close to $2,000. <laughs> oh, I think so. I, it's it maybe fifteen hundred. I don't know, but it's over a thousand. It's over a thousand. I mean, because the barrel itself is about six hundred. Plus, yeah. Plus, you know, um, you've got a two hundred bucks on the tax stamp, and you got to wait. <laughs> You're lucky you can avoid that as a SOT. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun look. It's always fun to build. I think anyone out there who builds up these ten twenty twos knows that all the aftermarket parts and stuff gets expensive, right? So when you start throwing stuff on there, it's kind of like an expensive thing to do, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's very modular. But you're what you're saying, Walter, that it's we could have just bought a scar. What was well, that? Well, not quite with two thousand, but I mean, like I said earlier, though, some places you can't have that scar, so you can have that ten twenty two and build it up like your what you'd like to have, and still go out and have fun. Absolutely, and you know what's the thing I wish. I wish more companies made integrally suppressed barrels. So I wish we could get like um, I think a few do make two, two, three, and three hundred blackout. Um, so I know someone made a nine millimeter, but I don't see all that stuff anymore. And then with this like um, apocalypse that's happening for suppressor companies now, no one wants to do that. I think some of them were gearing up to give us those kind of barrels. It would be cool because I would like to do a barrel like that on a nine millimeter you know, some other things, put them all together, make a smaller package because, you know, you get that one tax stamp and you're good to go. Yeah, the, the, the 1022 barrel is easy to change. So it's it's easy to it's easy to do that integral thing. But you start talking some other guns and it's it's just another can. You know, it's not integral. It's. Yeah, but there are some barrels you can get. There are some companies that make uh, 223, 300 blackout. I think even oh, a few people did nine millimeter. Well, like for an AR? For an yeah. AR? Yeah. Oh, I thought I so. Hey, but how do you, I mean, you could, I guess you could do it in triple. I mean, it's. I, I think there's some companies that either put them out or were, were going to put them out um, or put them out in the past or something like that. We could look it up and see. Or if folks out there know better than I do, definitely, definitely let me know. Um, there. So there are some things that I think integral is cool. Like on this, integral is really cool. Um, but mm -hmm. I've been like today, actually, I've been looking at. Um, I've gotten to a kick of looking at MP5 SDs, and as cool as they are, I feel like integral on something like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense now that you know subsonic nine millimeter is everywhere. You can pretty much pick it up anywhere. Um, have um, you ever seen a compressor from Spike Tactical? You've talked about this one a lot. You really like that gun, don't you? Yes. And if you ever I've shot, never shot one, you would not that talk the, is that the integral? Yes. If you, um, I've got a video. I've got maybe at least one or two videos of this on my channel. But um, I think it was Mookie who reps Spike's Tactical came out to the Hacienda and brought yeah. it. 
Full auto, intricately suppressed, 300 blackouts. <laughs> oh, it's a 300 SBR black. badass. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was that's, just That's kind of like, um, what's the other one? The Honey Badger. Somebody makes a Honey Badger. Isn't that one in, intricately suppressed? Um, I don't know. Maybe. It's possible. What I know, the compressor is friggin' awesome. And I want one, yeah. but they're very difficult uh, to come by. So, you know, I guess hey, I'm alone. Uh, now, when you hey, say... Hey, see, the Honey Badger, it's the same thing. It's intricately yeah. suppressed. When you use the term integrally suppressed or whatever, you mean it's the suppressor just going over the barrel. And, and it, yeah, it traps all the way over underneath the, the handguard. No, no, no. It means well, no, no, it's part of the barrel. Yeah. You know, to, to, to have that with an AR-15 and the gas system and all that, it's not easy to do. So I, I think we're 1022 doesn't have a gas system. So it's just a basically it's a you saw it's just a barrel, all one piece thing. You stick it in, you're done. You can't do that in AR-15. Yeah, you would have to figure out what to do with with um, the gas. But I think there's people who have them, you know. Here's how it works. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> the, I know I yeah, shot so the compressor, so and it's all it's all it's it like a monolithic thing. Yeah, it looks like it shrouds over the barrel, and it has a um, um, yeah. a short stroke gas piston. Hold on, let me grab the picture for you, Walter. Right, but it basically, yeah. it's, it's still not. The suppressor is not part of the barrel. It's, the suppressor it's, actually, it looks like the suppressor it is, technically goes over. Yeah, no, the, the suppressor housing actually goes over the, um, over the, the over gas the piston as well. Yeah. Wow. It's somewhat like, you know, I've got that 300 blackout barrel that has a shroud on the end that's pinned. And then that'll, so it's really like a shorter barrel, but with the shroud, it comes right, to right. the length. It's, just, it's got a short barrel and the handguard just extends out and the suppressor goes inside the handguard. Yeah, so, but right. this is the barrel itself. It's just, it's really all one piece. Even if, um, I don't, you probably can't take apart the uh, 300 or, you know, um, the 223. You can't take it apart like you can the 22. It's just pretty much all one thing. Okay. So, you know, and if you got that, it's one, um, it's one thing that you're getting, uh, one tax stamp that you're going to pay. Yeah, it's not considered an SBR, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's not an SBR. Yeah, so you just pay for the suppressor. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think they were – I know I've spoken to some companies that were going to come out with that. We were going to see that, but, um, you know, we wound up not. The market is uh, in again, a standstill right now, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing – nothing seems to be moving right now. Right. So, um, you know, let's um, – did you guys hear about this, like, um, this thing with, AK, with um, Kalishnikov is making a robotic – um, gun AI system for the Russians. Yeah, no, that sounds it. cool. Yeah, so it says the maker of celebrated AK-47 rifle has unveiled a new robotic gun system for the Russian military that will use artificial intelligence to size up targets, then shoot. <laughs> this will never go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, you know you can, like your self-driving cars, they work so well, too. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't kill anyone. Reports from TASS and others show that a turret system that can be installed in vehicles and operated by remote control, um, the director of communications for Kalishnikov told, told us that in the imminent future, the group will unveil a range of products based on on neural networks, a fully automated combat module featuring this technology is planned to be demonstrated at the Army 2017 forum. So on the flip side of that, uh, less than a week ago, Elon Musk was in front of Congress saying that, oh, we should probably put some rules on AI before it takes over and kills everyone. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, this is Russia. <laughs> so just, yeah. let's, just, you know, let's just let's bear that in mind here when we're thinking about this. Um, Russia's too crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's all yeah. Another report in Defense One said it appears to be capable of firing 25 millimeter rounds like those Holy used Christ. in anti-aircraft guns. Defense One's editor Patrick Tucker wrote the, um, the Russians are eager to use battlefield robots while the U.S. is not. Um, have these people ever seen Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. We've been we've been messing with that stuff for decades. So yeah, I mean, I don't think it's anything new. We just it just hasn't gotten to the point yet where it's like where you can just throw it out there and it'll go. You know, no, God, no. We're not. I don't think we're even close to that. Honestly. And you'll never ever be able to replace that guy laying, hiding in the bushes, taking notes. Sorry. You're yeah. Also, you know. Um, 
look, people can use these. I'm sure there's dictators and despots around the world that would like to have a couple of these so that when the people get out of hand, they can just roll them out on the yeah, streets. Yeah, just press because, a button. <laughs> yeah, because, you like know, an yeah, when you have guys behind it and they have to go out there and kill their own people in the streets, sometimes they go, wait a second, this is wrong. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Yeah, and they, turn, and they turn the guns around on the people who ordered them. So I'm pretty sure that there's governments and uh, – Lots of people, including some people in our own government, that would like to have access to this kind of technology. This is why, Walter, I know you're going to like this. This is why I believe everyone should have a 50. You better be ready to put these things down. <laughs> you know? Oh, can I add something? <laughs> sure. A 50 with a can so you can do it quietly and politely. Yeah. There you go. A can and a laser. <laughs> I mean, you, know. you don't want to give away your position. You might have to shoot two or three of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, I agree with you. This is, I'm not, and all kidding aside, this is a good reason, or this is a, a, a reason why you would want to make sure that in an apocalypse, you get yourself a 50. If you're going up against a, an attack helicopter or something like that, that these guys are stockpiling, you know. <laughs> you don't have to some, uh, explosive, with. some armor piercing explosive incendiary rounds to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Regular bullets aren't going to do the trick. Just, think, just so, like anyone out there who thinks, they're going to fight attack helicopters and stuff like that with um, 223. You're in big trouble. Speaking of, Walter, have you put, ever put any of the exotic 50 rounds through the uh, through your, your 50s? Like the AP or the explosives or anything? Incendiary? Yeah, I have APIT and API and, and uh, <laughs> <The> cool stuff. <laughs> Ralph, Ralphus rounds, which is like the, you know, the stuff that goes bang a little bit. But Oh, that's cool. It's really not. APIT is cool because it's got more things going on. But um, how accessible is that? Is that accessible? Pardon me. Are those kinds of rounds accessible to the general yeah, public? That's, it's, it's, that's all legal in Florida. It's no problem. The problem. With shooting, okay, here. Let's see yeah. how many you can get for this the price. Shooting, I'm about to give you some stats here. Yeah, part of the problem with shooting all those rounds is you'll start the woods on fire if you're not careful. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just ask <laughs> our friend, uh, Fifty Percent Tactical. He has a great video on this if you want to see some place burning down. Yeah, and I don't want Holy to be the guy. That, I don't want to be the guy on the news that burned the woods down. So, um, okay. You know. Yeah, Fiddy has a he has a um, Derek. He has a video where um, he didn't he didn't completely burn it down, but it was burning. <laughs> and it luckily for them, it burnt itself out. It's like a few million views here's, on that thing. Here's a website: six hundred and fifty grain tungsten penetrator incendiary igniter. Uh, with a tracer, three hundred and seventy-four dollars for hundred and fifty of them. That is an oh, expensive that's... round. Yeah, let's see. Is that thirty something or thirty something <laughs> bucks around? Uh, API API T is is usually pretty cheap because you can't shoot it everywhere. Um, let's see. So one hundred and fifty non-linked is three three seventy-four at this website. I mean, oh, this is X products. X products is probably way more expensive. Oh, three seventy-five for hundred rounds. Uh, yeah. 375 for 150. Yeah, that's not bad. That's 375 around. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, you know. No, that's not crazy. When we okay, have yeah, to so fight... that's not that bad. I'm just, that's just big numbers for me because I'm not used to spending. Yeah. When, we, when you have to fight the machines, it's going to look real cheap. <laughs> they PIT rounds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you're gonna stop, you need to bury some of those in the backyard for real. <laughs> right. now, you don't, you don't want to shoot the gun on the machine. You just want to shoot the machine so you can take the gun off and use it yourself. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. You got you yeah. got to put the circuit board out of it. See, out of Walter. Condition. Here's what you need to do, man. You need to make you need to make a sealed container for one of your fifties. So it's a sealed container. It has the rounds and everything in it, the laser, everything you need, and and it's ready to be buried. What what you know? what good is it going to do you when it's buried? Well, you got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> when you need it, then you when the apocalypse hits, you, get, you dig it up. That's the, that's the that's the bad part about the burying stuff. Unless you got mass quantities of stuff to bury. When well, you really need it, you'll be out in the backyard digging it up, and they'll be they'll shoot you with a <laughs> well, shovel. I suggest arm. I suggest you get yeah. two. You get two. You bury one. You keep one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So everybody needs two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone needs. Are you against this, Walter? You want to no, tell no, the I'm people? Not no, it. no. I, oh, everybody oh, should okay. have two or three. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> two or three fifties. No, listen. Even, I think everyone should have at least one. Yeah, you can have two or three different makes if you want to. I don't care. Just just get yeah. something. You know, I think everyone should have a 50. It's a good thing. All kidding aside, you could shut down vehicles and a bunch of other stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, you can 
You can um, disable infrastructure. That's what they call it. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. take out drones and um, automate it. have a hell of a time shooting a drone with a 50. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, it takes some skill. If that's what you got to do. <laughs> Use a bird shot or something for you better, a drone. You better be you better in the bushes. Before turkey loads or something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, don't know. I, don't think that, I don't think a shotgun's going to help you against a drone. Uh, yeah. But, you know. Let's hope we don't have to do that. Yeah, have a fifty. Have a fifty. There's nothing wrong Everybody with it. Yeah. So it's always fun to shoot. So Yeah. There you go. Okay, so let's see. What news did you what you wanted to, to uh bring up some news? Oh uh, let's before. see. What oh. was that? What were you gonna hit us with? I'm just looking on Facebook here and this one of the one of the posts there was like anti Trump march gets real awkward when protesters are asked for one example of Trump's racism. So mm -hmm. obviously these these weirdos couldn't they couldn't bring anything up because they were they don't really know what the hell they're doing anyways. So I think most people just assume that Trump is racist because he wants to build a wall. I don't know. Well, you know, makes you, um, you know, I don't know how that makes you racist. I mean, I, I guess if you put up a fence between you and your neighbors, you're a racist. Yeah, you might have a nutty neighbor. So what do you want to do? You want to keep your nutty neighbor out of your yard? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you know. your, maybe your nutty neighbor's watching your little girl in the backyard when you're not there. You know? Yeah, if there was any real like hardcore evidence of Trump being racist, that would be getting played every It'd single day. all over the news, my Yeah, friend. they would drop this Russia boondoggle for that. Um, yeah, yeah, that you know, Trump's been on the record for most of his life. If he's seven, how old is Trump? Was he? He's was he seven. 70 something? Because he's our oldest president so far, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's old yeah, I mean, if it was if there was something for real there, and they'd be Trump. They'd be dragging yeah. those people out in front of the crowd like they were with all those women that he abused. Yeah. What happened to all those women? Yeah, Where'd they know. go? I don't, I don't oh, know. Sora, they all went to Russia. Soros <laughs> stopped, stopped paying the Russians. Stopped the Russians got them. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Walter. Yeah, I can't believe that. Like this stuff with Trump Jr. Still, like, who gives a crap what Trump Jr. was doing? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like if yeah, someone if someone sent if someone sent uh, an email to Clinton to Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton like hey we got some evidence on Trump they wouldn't go oh wait a second yeah <laughs> see the thing is the thing is the Clintons would just get the info and then murder the person that gave it to them so there was no <laughs> trace it's funny how they 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 start having they start committing suicide yeah you know, exactly those guys are good man suicide yeah and it's like yeah. And they say that Bush Sr. was the one in the CIA? I don't believe that, man. Hillary Clinton, <laughs> she was in the CIA. You know, we know she's disappeared with a couple of people. So, yeah. So um, now this is like a weird thing. You know, we're always talking about these different incidents that happened with the police. Have you guys seen this thing with the Australian woman? Oh, yeah. I, I, it's weird. It says... I don't uh, even know what to say. <laughs> like... Yeah, um, family of woman killed by Minneapolis police desperate for information. So there was this woman from Australia that was getting married. And um, I guess she, you know, in Minneapolis, there was some kind of weird noise. And um, what is it? It says uh, the family of a woman who was shot and killed by Minneapolis police is making a desperate plea for information about the last moments of her life. Justine Rus. Ruskiek, I guess, making it, that does not sound Australian to me, called 911 on Saturday night because she thought a sexual assault was taking place in a back alley near her home. Her fiance, fiance Don Damon, said in a news conference Monday surrounded by family. After Minneapolis police arrived, an officer shot and killed Rus Ruskiek. That's all the family knows, Damon said. Police still haven't explained how or why the shooting occurred. Sadly, her family and I have been provided with almost no additional information from law enforcement regarding what happened after police arrived. Uh, he said we've, uh, so apparently here, um, the officer involved in the shooting, Mohammed Noor, extended his condolences to the family in a statement through his attorney. Noor came to the United States at a young age and is thankful to have so many opportunities. Okay, so they have to, like they're letting us know that he's an immigrant, so don't like, Anything you say bad about him. Oh, you're a racist. You're going to be bad. It, you're you're going to be wrong here. Um, he's going to get extra protected anyway, because I'm sure there's folks out there, uh, police officers, who's just going to say, yeah, this is totally fine. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with, with, there's with something killing missing. him. There's, there's something missing here. Like, you don't just shoot somebody at your window. Like, there has to be something, some part of the story that's missing that they haven't said yet. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I don't know what it would be. Like, I don't understand why you would draw on some. So it says here the officers were wearing body cameras, but they were not turned on during the incident. That's a problem. Yeah. Per department policy, body cameras are supposed to be turned on prior to the use of force. So oh, that doesn't make any sense. So you're about no, to like, body cam should be on twenty four seven. Yeah, how are you going to think about that? Like, oh, well, I think we're about to use some force here. Let's turn on the cam yeah. <laughs> That's when I will be turning them off. So yeah, no, body cam should be on all the time. Yeah, there should be no options if you've got um, uh, body cameras of when you turn it on and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it should just be yeah. on. <clears throat> Honestly, since all of this stuff, you know, just like anything else, we don't know what the hell's going on here. Um, I remember saying the other day, every single time police get involved in something, it's like a potential thing that could go wrong. Obviously, 99% of the time things don't go wrong. But how does it feel to you when it goes wrong and, and it's either, you know, you or someone who you really care about? You don't care about the uh, statistics at that point, you know, so... Yeah. Um, and, and the and the weird thing about this, this is kind of like a reverse thing, right? Because the victim here is white and the police officer is black. So probably um, no one's going to talk about this. Where is he from? Uh, hmm. um, I don't know, but his name is Mohammed Noor. Uh, Somali. So, oh, he's Somalian? Okay. So there you go. You know, um, I guess that's, you know, you definitely can't claim racism here. Survey says. Eh? I don't know. You know, maybe he just doesn't like blonde people from uh, Australia, <laughs> Australian accents who are about to get married. So do we care <laughs> about this? Do you think people care about this more because it's like a blonde chick? You know, that happens. It's just like, when, think... like when a little blonde baby girl disappears, everyone in the world cares about what happened to this little blonde baby girl. Any, no, I can't see anything. What's that little girl that's always any, in the tablet? Any, any little blonde. <laughs> Listen, oh, God. You know, any little blonde baby girl that disappears, everyone cares. What I noticed. But like, uh, if a little nappy-headed baby disappears, <laughs> no, nobody wants oh, to know. I like, can see that. I can't. That happens all the time. I missed right. all that. Huh? I missed all that. You went. Uh, you went. Um, you oh, went you... funny sounding over here on my end. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like you were getting it. You missed. It was brilliant. I was dropping some like comedy brilliance here, Walter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, man! I can't believe you missed it. I think You'll we had to... a doc. I think the aliens from Doctor Who were attacking just as you went. Brilliant. Yeah, we're being censored. You're gonna have to go back and listen to it on the uh, podcast. Time oh, to watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you could listen to it. Let, you know, this is a good opportunity to remind people that hey, we're on iTunes until I figure out how to get us on other places. Uh -huh. you know, but that's gonna happen. <laughs> but uh, we're on iTunes. I think we've got 15 episodes on iTunes as of today. So. Nice. Yeah, I want to encourage everyone to go out there and listen and leave um, leave uh, positive feedback and all that kind of stuff. Because in the first couple of weeks when we're brand new out there, it's an opportunity for us to like bump up, you know, get some shine, get a little bit of glory. So definitely get out there and do that. Let's see what else we want to hit here. You know, that's less like a did you like a, this is another police thing. I know I'm not trying to like. You know, hit you guys. Did you hear about the Texas Ranger who like flipped off a driver and then pulled him over? No, but and that so, seems yeah. So in wrong. in uh, in Texas, I guess there was like a road rage incident with this Texas Ranger who happens to be a black Texas Ranger. So no, you know, okay. If we're, if we're counting. So um, Texas Ranger pulls gun on driver who flipped him off. Yeah. So this guy, so this guy somehow got into oh, a road pulled rage. Pulled a gun on him. Ooh. Yeah. Pulled a gun on. Him. Yeah. So there's a white guy who's driving and somehow gets into some some kind of thing with 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 a with someone else in a vehicle and then the guy like tries to cut him off and pull him off the road and everything and pulls out a gun and then he puts on he puts on his uh, what do you call it blues and twos if you're if you're into the British thing, Walter, you know about the blues and twos, I guess. But anyway, he puts on his lights and his siren and everything and pulls him over. So the guy refuses to get out of his car. He calls 911. <laughs> he's like, there's some guy trying to pull me over with lights. I don't, I don't believe he's a cop. So um, this is an interesting um, thing that went down here. Let me, so, uh, let me read the article for you guys. A Texas Ranger station in Austin, Austin exercised poor judgment in an incident where he pulled over and pointed his gun at a driver who flipped him off in traffic. 
according to the Texas Department of Safety. During the incident, Round Rock police rushed to an intersection along Interstate 35 after a call for help from the driver, who was on the phone with 911 operator saying someone's trying to pull him over in an unmarked vehicle. So, so, yeah. so the Texas Ranger was unmarked. Right. Okay. So I'd like to know what the police did when they got there. The um, marked police. What did the marked police do to the unmarked police? Well, yeah, they just investigated it. And then so the Texas Ranger said he didn't do anything. But I think that the, <laughs> he pulled a gun he, on the dude. Well, see, now the I officers, know. the officers who came, they had body cameras. But being a Texas Ranger, I guess they're not required by law to have body cameras. So he gave a completely different story. But this article goes on to say that you can hear him shouting at the guy on the 911 call. So it's kind of like contrary to what he's saying went down. Okay. Do you guys really think that if people have power, they would abuse it like that? I don't know if I oh, every day. Okay. Every day. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't know if I would believe this thing. <laughs> One thing I will you agree with. somebody power. Yeah. It will. It's not a matter of if they will abuse it. It's a matter of when they will abuse it. And how often. Yeah. And how often, yeah. So, I mean, you know, if someone pulls you, if someone's pulling you over and they have lights like that, are you going to automatically believe that it's a police officer? No. So, uh, okay, I, I can't speak to this for sure, but I believe if you're getting pulled over by an unmarked car, you can call 911 and say, hey, I'm getting pulled over. Is this a legit car? And they'll tell you like, oh yeah, it's a cop. Pull over. Um, I've yeah. heard that before. I don't know if that's fact, but somebody that's yeah, in someone the, can Someone can weigh in and tell us. One of the cops in the channel can let us know. Yeah, absolutely. So, and there are there are there are guys who are police officers who um, tune into what we do, and yeah. you know what? It's happened before. I remember when we lived in New York, there was a guy like uh, pretending to be be a police officer that tried to yeah, pull over yeah. Lola. So people pull that stunt all the time. Yeah, you know, there and you're better there. you're better safe than sorry, right? I think so. You can, you're better be better safe than Australian. <laughs> that's so cold Walter <laughs> you know yeah I think there's lots of things you can do you can either will call we, the police will we, really, will we really ever know what happened there I don't know I doubt it I don't think yeah, we're going to yeah. know because will it, will it be too politically incorrect to uh, really know hmm. I don't know how are we going to find out what happened I... there's another cop there that didn't shoot somebody right yeah but you know, neither one of their of body them, right? cameras were on or anything like that. So there were two policemen there, right? Sure. So is the one going to tell the truth about the one that did the bad stuff? I don't know. This is the question people always ask, even if they do tell the truth. You know, the truth? in the end, you're pretty I mean, pretty much the way that it goes is you're indemnified as a police officer when you shoot people. Have, do, is there any. Is there any evidence when, or is there any history of when someone was convicted for wrongly shooting someone as a police officer? Yeah, they just officer? did it recently. Oh, okay. I mean, one of those cops just shot somebody recently. Was already in the in or yeah, it was it was a uh, charge with murder or manslaughter or whatever. It's happened pretty recently. Most of the time, most of the time, they're not convicted. They may be charged with something, but they're not convicted if it gets yeah. to that. Oh, because here, I, I mean, here, go ahead. Back to uh, back to DMX. I was reading the story here. He uh, back in two thousand four, he impersonated a cop at uh, yeah. Kennedy Airport. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> he, he impersonated a federal agent or something. Yeah, FBI. He, yeah, he did that. I'm commandeering this vehicle, ma'am. Get the hell out. <laughs> but and I think he got charged with carjacking because there, there was like a guy in a vehicle with his kid in the airport. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, and DM, DMX was that. like late for a concert or something. Yeah, you, you can't just do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, to get back to what you know, what you were saying, Walter, I think most of the time, um, you know, if if police officers feel like their life was in danger, then they have some kind of indemnification, you know, for the use of force. That, so this it's it's a weird thing. Claiming. If you read through further in the article, he the the. Texas Ranger is claiming that he got out of his truck to talk to the guy that cut him off and then for some reason felt endangered so he drew his gun. Yeah. Even though it sounds like he was the he really was the aggressor because he, you know, pulled up behind the guy and got out to like kind of sounds like he's wanted to start a fight. Yeah. So if he felt in danger, you know, if you if why didn't if he call you, for backup? I uh, yeah. 
Um, you know, if I was if I was a policeman, and the first time I thought anything was going to go down, I'm on the radio before it goes down, mm -hmm. getting my brothers here. You know. Yeah, but yeah. if he if he felt in like imminent danger, then he would draw his gun. The guy's lucky that he didn't shoot him because you know. The Wait. cops lucky he didn't shoot him either. They're both lucky because yeah, all the way around would be in prison forever. Yeah, some of these dead. things can be avoided, but it's just one of the situations that. Um, I think somebody doesn't need to be a Texas Ranger. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure you're right there. Yeah. I think one of the things is here is that we have lots of law enforcement out there for different reasons. And I know that some of them are, are you know, they're out there working and doing, you know, doing a good job. But there's just some guys that have a lot of time on their hand and just get up to craziness and forget that they're supposed to be serving the people, including in the case of this guy that's a Texas Rangers. You know, you're supposed to be serving the people. You know, I'm not saying it's not, hey, it's a terrible thing if someone flips you off. We're in traffic. We're driving all the time. If someone flips you off. You just let it. If you make it a thing. Yeah, just, just let it go. Yeah. If you make <laughs> so it a thing, the, then it's going to just, what? it's going to escalate, right? I mean, if somebody flips you off, I mean, it's like, okay, you can laugh it off or you can flip him back, but do you want to, you want to, he might be a nutcase and, and get all offended and everything. And next thing you know, he's shooting at you. So, yeah, you know chill out sometimes you know it's like i know you get all mad and you get all crazy and everything else but it's like what are you gonna what, what's it get you in the end besides heartburn yeah um, listen what we all have to really, do is try to avoid that perfect storm because it's not ending well, sometimes, good for you anyone. sometimes you do stuff you cut people off you don't realize you do it sometimes you you do stupid stuff and it just happens yeah yeah i mean Everybody, but, you know, it's it's when it's a perfect storm, right? It's when both of you had a bad day, because, for example, if you're coming out and you're pulling out a gun and this guy doesn't know who you are because you're in an unmarked vehicle and all that stuff. Um, and then it's Texas now. So let's just bear in mind, it's Texas. Oh, and the guy so goes, oh, shit. You know, this guy's getting a gun. I'm going to get my gun. Now you're yeah, in a bad situation and, a and it's not worth it. Yeah. Well, so yeah. if this is one of those things, like most things, where it's probably both people at fault. I'm sure this guy wasn't innocent. I'm sure he did something to this oh, Texas Ranger. Not. But that know. doesn't mean you got to pull your gun out and put it in somebody's face. No. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's just, you're yeah, supposed if, to be. If he's driving recklessly, maybe you pull him over. If he doesn't believe you're a cop, you wait until the other cops get there. And then right, you, you still don't shoot him. Yeah, you go. This guy was driving recklessly. What if you, what if you, what if you stop and you keep your window rolled up and you're talking on the phone? Is that where you shoot him? Through the window? I, I mean, it's know, like, man. we weren't there, so we don't know, so. Yeah, but this is why I always say that I really think that there's a lot more training that needs to go on here. Obviously, that's not going to, um, that's not going to stop the situation of getting into things with, with people out there. But the people who definitely have this, um, who are moving around with this authority to kill need to be trained how to, to avoid these situations, right? You would think yeah. so. Yeah, that that's I think um, highly necessary here. Luckily for these guys, you know, it's no harm, no foul. No one got shot, but it could have really could have easily gone really, really bad. On to the next story. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can I sense that you don't want to talk about this anymore. No, you no, I'm just I'm making I'm I'm, I'm making we, fun of the news cycle. Yeah. Should All we right, talk so about should we talk about John McCain and his craziness? Well, yeah, he's I got something wrong with him. And yeah. it's probably more than they're releasing, so let's get rid of the old guy. Yeah, I also heard that John McCain might have leaked some stuff on uh um, I heard that too, yeah. On Trump, yeah. So yeah. do you think is it is it convenient that he's all of a sudden sick? Is this like a That's his you way know, out. tail wagging the dog kind of so situation? You, you're supposed to feel sorry for old John McCain and he gets to slide out of any any blame. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure that we're gonna find out he leaked some he he uh, he was doing some leak in here, but what was uh, I saw in the news today that Comey's sliding into some high paying oh, job. What's he doing? Mm, I don't know. I didn't see that. I didn't read the article because I don't want to give him any time. But um, yeah, Comey. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's already got a lot of that himself. So yeah, he's a he's a slime ball too. So. Yeah. Also, we're gonna be remiss. I'm sure the people, uh, at least one person in the background, is gonna want to talk about the Game of Thrones season seven. <laughs> yeah, spoil it. I'm gonna yeah. get out of here while you guys talk about that. <laughs> uh, stay right there, Walter. You're gonna love. Walter has a scene. Right, uh, Hank has a scene. Yeah, can't spoil it. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, Walter any... has no clue what the Game of Thrones is. Does I'm on season M14s on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in, I'm. I just got to season two of Game of Thrones, and it's only like what season eleven or something. I don't know. Oh, seven, obviously. 
season seven. So I'm, I'm on season <laughs> way two. Behind. Yeah. So don't um, you know, how was it though? How was it? How was the first episode, Babyface? Since you watched it, uh, I haven't seen it. Marley has, and she loved it. Don't She's a love huge it? fan of it. I'm okay. I'm I read the books, and I haven't yeah. really seen the show. Walter, you would like the Game of Thrones. There's a lot of boobage in there. A lot of boobage. You know, um. Some of those, like um, the what Hunger Games and all that, Peggy watches mm -hmm. that stuff, and it's like a lot of talking and a lot of a lot of this, and, and then it's like all of a sudden they kill each other, and it's like I just it's the same thing over and over and over. It's it, no, but the Game of Thrones is actually pretty good. It's based on a, a George R R Martin um, series of books, and he doesn't yep. he doesn't play around, man. Every cat he has, no, he kills he, everybody. Yeah, he doesn't fall in love with any characters. His shit is real. <laughs> he kills off every character. Yeah, so don't he's like a real know. gangster in these stories, man. <laughs> everybody dies. Let me just put it yeah. to you that way. <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> but it's because I've I've um I've listened on audiobook to the stories. I don't have that much time to read as much as I would like. But I've listened to the audiobooks. I've gotten. I think I got a little further than the Red Wedding. <laughs> so. If you're into the Game of Thrones, you know what the red, yeah. the red wedding is all about. Walter, you <laughs> would love it. Everyone you love. Yeah. So, but I think you would. I, honestly, I think you would like it. You know, there's some things in there that I'm not a super big fan of, but most it's good. It's good stuff. You know, I like it. It's what we were talking about with sci-fi. It has a little bit of sci-fi fantasy in it. It's got murdery or killery it's, it's it just, is. You know. So it's fantasy and it's just starting to become high fantasy where magic and stuff is coming into, which is good. Yeah. yeah. The first couple of seasons they hinted at it and they never really got into it and now it's becoming true like magical yeah. high fantasy. But the good thing is there's lots of sex in there. For the most part, that's a good thing. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some sex that you don't necessarily want to see. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean... You can always hit fast forward <laughs> and just and you can, <laughs> go through that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a couple of things in in there that you're probably that's not like, gonna want. It's like see. watching porn and putting on a fast forward. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's the only that's the only way I watch porn. <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> I gotta get to the good stuff. Like, oh, okay, good. That was good. Let's move on. <laughs> I wish that you know there was a movie. Was it called Remote or something like that? Do you guys remember that movie where the guy had a remote? <laughs> no, yeah, 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 with, uh, with the comedian. Uh, was it Adam Sandler? Oh, I need to look that Adam up. Adam Sandler, yeah. Yeah, there was a movie <laughs> where the guy, this guy had a remote. Man, I want that. Someone needs to invent that. Just fast forward life. to the garbage. <laughs> yeah, you could just pause, rewind, do all kinds of stuff. All right, Walter, what guns do you want to show us? Come on. No, this, is, this is actually, this is one to get you killed. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, airsoft one, but it has no... Uh, it looks no, just like a real micro Uzi, except it's just yeah. airsoft. Oh, so what are you doing with it? Oh, just it's in my room here. It's just it's not. It's Thank one of my only room. real. Not, I mean, I don't have a lot of. I don't have any airsoft besides this. So. Um, oh okay. Hanking's one of those for his back wall. Yeah. It just looks so cool. I couldn't. I can't get rid of it. So. You like the cool functionality of it, even though you have the real things. Yeah, I, I was a uh, day late and a dollar short on the micro Uzi pistols when they were affordable. Well, kind uh -oh, of. Oh, so you don't have a so you don't have a micro Uzi then? No, just the regular Uzis, you know. Oh, okay, we can always we can always build one. Oh, uh, well, sure. Uh, you buy what you need. Well, build it then. How's that? Yeah. Here's a uh, here's an H and K MP seven A one thirteen hundred bucks post sample. <laughs> That's what you need. See, while we're talking, Babyface is looking up guns. <laughs> what? What? Right. Well, yeah. I can't own them. Because <laughs> you haven't spent. You, no, the MP7. Oh, you uh, the the newer one. Okay, you haven't spent enough money on guns today. No, never. <laughs> I don't want to talk about. It. <laughs> Speaking of, anybody want to buy my RFB? <laughs> okay, where is it? So Babyface has an RFB that he's selling for anyone who's looking for an RFB. And if you guys want to know, it has history attached to it. I used to own this RFB, and it's been in YouTube videos, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is a green RFB from Hank's videos forever. Ago. Yeah, so there you go. Does it come with uh, authenticity papers? Yeah, it comes with oh, me yeah. saying saying right now, <laughs> I owned it. <laughs> I touched we that. We sign it somewhere. And Babyface owned it, <laughs> you know. So there you go. I don't want to get rid of it, but somebody's got to pay for this Python, and it's got to be me. <laughs> so how much are you selling this for? I'm thinking 1350 Okay. 
So it's not a bad price. Yeah. So I'm just not, um, I'm just not rolling know, in right now. Yeah. Let's let's uh let's make sure we let folks know out there that if you're if you are really interested in this, it has to obviously go through an FFL and all that kind of stuff and be legal. But you can hit us up on PM and uh, you know we'll we'll do all the necessary things if you're seriously interested in it, right, Babyface? Yeah. Yeah. No. Seriously. Yeah. I, I'm looking to sell it off. So. Yeah. Are you selling it with anything? What's it coming with? Uh, I got an optic too that I'm looking to get rid of. If you want it. Okay. Got some extra mags. Oh, I have a. Oh yeah, I got two mags. Uh, it comes with the extended charging handle. It comes with a uh, vertical grip and a um, the muzzle brake. Oh, the uh, the what should we call it? ASR brake for. Um, 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 one of those suppressors. Silencer Co. Oh, that's for the Silencer Co. suppressor. Which one? Yeah, and then I also, if anybody's looking for an optic, I also have the optic for it as well. It's a Vortex One to Six Strike Eagle. Man, okay. there you go. So you have like a package deal going if if someone's interested in this. It's a little bit more if you want the optic, but right. <laughs> thirteen fifty if you want it just the way it is. Yeah, we were trying to we were trying to get Walter to get this so we can keep it in house. Oh, wow. Yeah, but, you know, I, you know, I, f I fell for the uh, I fell for the Malot trap. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I shot you, my wide on the Malat trap. So yeah, yeah, it, yeah it, it, they are banned now, though, aren't they? So you got in beforehand. Yeah. yeah. If uh, someone's uh, looking for an OD Green RFB 308 that was once owned by Hank Strange <laughs> and uh, specially put together by Caltech back in the days, um, and then lovingly taken care of by Babyface P, hit us it's up. A good gun. Yeah, and um, you know if you can legally own this thing in your state. I'll probably regret not doing it, but oh well, that's life. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, that's how it goes. Here's another thing I want to talk about. I don't know if you guys remember. I'm trying to remember what episode that was where we had BMH Knives on. I think it was like episode 15 or something like that, Lola. You know what episode that was? So we had we had Blake Hernandez from BMH Knives, and he was on. Uh, really cool guy. He makes some very custom uh, sweet, sweet knives. He's an artist. And this is some. This is a print of uh, some work that he did, the Batman print. That's cool. And he actually sent us ten of these bad boys that so that we can give these away to the fans of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. So on the particular video that he was on, he mentioned these, and we've got ten of these. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give some of these away. And what you need to do in order to get one of these very cool posters is. Uh, Mention it in this in this particular video that you're interested. Also, I'm gonna ask you to go out there and like find the video of um, Blake from BMH Knives when he was on the show and share that. Help us get some more views for it and all that kind of cool stuff. And we'll we'll get Lola to ship you off a poster. What do you think about that, Babyface? Are you into this kind of stuff? It's very cool. That's cool. Uh, it's neat. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, the art is pretty neat. You got like Batman. Yeah, he's I'm a more serious artist. Person over you like this kind of stuff, Walter? I'm Batman. You like? Are you into this? Oh, okay. So you no, it's like cool. Batman. Batman's cool. As long yeah, as he what is it? Batman. I'm like an old school Batman. Okay, yeah. It says on the like, and he's also got stuff written on the back of each one of them. It seems like he he personally signed the back, which actually makes these cooler. So you see, they're serialized right there. Like wow. like 98 of 100, and he wrote something different on that one from what he wrote on this one. So there you go. We've got 10 of these. So unless unless you guys want one, then we'll have then oh, we'll have eight. Do I have? A, can I can I get one? Yeah, you can. Okay, so we only have eight of these people. <laughs> we'll give one to Babyface. <laughs> one goes to Babyface. One goes to Walter. As long because yeah. I know you guys will like share these and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Blake's a really good guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to somebody else actually. So. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, you know, I'll like. As long as supplies last, I'll throw in a BMH sticker in there. And I'm sure Lola, whenever she ships these things out, always throws in something cool. So only thing I'm asking is, like, help share that podcast or help share something from BMH Knives and, you know, mention it in this thing, and then we'll go back and track hey, you let, down. Let so it's only eight at this point because two of them have been claimed. <laughs> let me ask the world something here. What's up? Who's got good prices on a Magpul AK Mags? Anybody know that who's got the best prices on them? Who has them? Aim surplus. Yeah, you're looking for the ones with the steel um, steel lips, right? I'm looking for the latest, whatever the Magpul magazine for the AK is. Yeah. Yeah, go to Aim Surplus. They're free. They have free shipping on them too. Um, Where? That's probably I'm your sorry. best bet. Where? Aim surplus. Aim. Surplus. Oh, aim. Okay. 
Okay. I, I need one for our when we do our AK video. I like to have one of those. So. Okay, I think I've got one. I yeah. I have one if you want to try it. They're awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely a Magpul Mag person. So. Um. The the new series of the Magpul AK Mags have steel feed lips and a steel locking lug, so they're like way more durable than the old ones. Yeah, because I you can't beat the. AR mags. I'm sorry. I haven't found anything that works as good, mm -hmm. in my opinion, anyway. So totally. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? When we do that thing, we've we've got. Um, when are we doing that? I don't even know when we're doing that. We need to. We need to do. I just went to AIM surplus. You know, I don't have any connection with AIM. Mm -hmm. They have billet lowers, Noreen billet lowers for thirty three dollars. Mm. Yep. I mean, uh, they're sixty sixty. Four, I think they're not 70 74 60 61 or 60, 61 yeah they're 60 61 that's a yeah. little softer than that's a little softer than 70 75 but for yeah. the average person it's not gonna make any damn difference um, and but how do you make something like that even with the modern <laughs> stuff for 33 uh, trust me I make stuff the aluminum they have to be cranking them out for yeah it's called overbuilding overbuilding they make a dollar profit or something like maybe, it can't maybe be much Maybe they've got machines they bought for the for the Clinton administration, and now they got to <laughs> yeah, trying to pump out what they can. Yeah, I don't know, but um, I just saw that on their site, so I was just like, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of good deals out there now. I'm always telling people. I mean, if you've been uh, yeah, saving your powder, here's one. If anybody's, I don't know if they still have them, but Centerfire Systems had those um the magnesium Magtech lowers for twenty five dollars yeah, cool, a piece. Oh wow! Yeah, so. I need yeah. I mean, twenty-five dollars for a magnesium lower. Yeah, that's good. That's insane. That's cool. Yeah. Have you ever? Um, I know that Fostec is actually getting into selling those lowers, and they built Fostec built a really nice. Where, where's the uppers? I need a I need a magnesium upper. Uh, we got to talk to uh, Judd from Fostec. Uh, I got to try to see if I can even get him. Because I want to put one of those in one of those uh, pencil thin barrels from. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh hell, what's their name? It begins with uh, an M. Yeah, you're talking about. Um, Axon. Yeah, from Faxon, yeah. Yeah, build a super lightweight, but not super expensive, lightweight gun. So. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, so, you know, we've been doing this for a while. You guys, um, Babyface, you want to show us your gun or talk about what – do you have any videos coming out, Babyface? I haven't had anything in a while. Okay. been working with you. We gotta, we're going to start doing the, uh, the series on optics, though. So. Yeah, we're going to start talking about optics and uh, get some just optic videos up there. So we've been testing these things for a while. And uh, we'll just sit down and pick out an optic and talk about it and talk about the different guns we use. Um, face, we're going to see you Sunday. Are you going to be at Hank's? Isn't that? Yeah. Isn't what time? You that's Saturday, not Sunday. Oh, Saturday. I'm sorry. 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 Won't sorry. Be Saturday. Yeah. Won't be there Saturday. Yeah. Won't be there Saturday. I'll bring that. I'll bring that Colt, that old Colt Army pistol with me. If you oh, leave it with Hank, I'll grab it and I'll I'll see if I can get the timing working. Okay. You're not going to be able yeah, to make there's it. There's no hurry on it. You know, it's yeah. whenever. So. Okay. All right. Cool. So cool. nothing you want to plug, baby face. Um, Remind people to go. So, like you've got some serious subscribers. Your subscriber number is growing on YouTube, right? You got. I gotta actually get up. some content though. I'm I'm pretty terrible about doing yeah. content right now. You gotta start posting every day. <laughs> what we need to do is uh, get me on the uh, get me on the old FFL SOT so I can take the suppressors and do some videos with them. Uh huh. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're running those negotiations with Lola. Right well, did now. I just hear Lola sigh in the background? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good thing you're not here to get smacked up. Okay, <laughs> Walter, anything? Yes. What are you up to? Oh boy, Re recovering from the weekend. Um, from your two hours in the sun. No, and my uh, my son was pushing me this morning to um, when we're we gonna build. He's like, when we're we gonna build the. Uh, the post sample AR AK. When are we gonna build a post sample AK? It's you, like you need to oh, what? immediately now. I'm like, damn it! I didn't even do the stuff I need to do before I start playing. Come on. Um, yeah. Do you, no, I want to get the, the stuff to make one. What's that? Do you have the stuff to bend a receiver flat and everything? Because I I have all of it, so I can loan it out to you if you want to bend your own receiver. Oh no, I've got I've got um, I probably got a donor gun here. I can I'm gonna do as a post sample. So. Oh, okay. You're just um, gonna drill it and post sample it. Yeah, I've got a, a Romanian Wasser, whatever it is, and oh, okay. cheap gun. So we're going all SBR and everything, right? We're making this totally. Uh, bad we might just do straight up, straight up, old school AK first. Full auto. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. It'd be a lot. It'll be a lot. It'll be a lot quicker than than doing that. Um, I want to build like a a Kyber gun, and I got all uh, kinds uh, of. Those parts. are my favorite. 
I got parts from all over the world. I want to put all in one. Okay. Uh, okay. That's cool. But I can't be rushed when I do that because I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we want it. You know, we want it to be nice. We want it to be nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I want it to look good. Yeah, and actually work. That helps. Right. So, so I'm going to encourage everyone to uh, check out Safety Harbor Firearms. Uh, they've always got a lot of cool stuff going on. And also check out Babyface P on YouTube. He's, well, you know, you got to encourage him to start getting back into making the videos, putting the videos out there. And uh, I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel, including Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns, who gives us the studio and gives us the broadband and helps us to uh, keep this going. And, you know, definitely want to thank, thank, excuse me, thank everyone that tunes into this and hangs out in the background asking questions and having a good old time. There's always a party going on in the background of these things. And of course, big shout out to our, the people who support us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange, and uh, we appreciate and need your support. Okay, I'm gonna end it here. I'm Hank Strange. Don't forget to check out the iTunes podcast. Peace.